Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I've got a review for you, Bag of Bones by Stephen King. So I read this as part of my Stephen King project where I'm reading all of the Stephen King books that I haven't yet read. Um, and I'm trying to do that chronologically. So this is the first Stephen King book that I hadn't read, if that makes sense. So this is the first one that I DNF'd on trying it first time around. So I bought a hardcover copy of this. I don't think it's this copy. I think I got this one more recently. But I bought a hardcover copy of this when it came out um, and started reading it and, and just couldn't get into it at the time. Um, and I think reading it again now, I understand why that was. So this book came out 24 years after Carrie. And if you think about it, it's basically bang in the middle of King's career to date. So Carrie came out, I think, in 74. This came out in 98, so 24 years later. And we're now 25 years on from there. So like bang in the middle of King's career. And it feels like it shifts the gear a bit from his earlier books. So I had read, as I said, all the books of his up until this point. Um, and they are all really more of, you know, what you think of as like classic Stephen King. So the kind of, you know, the big ones like The Shining, Salem's Lot, Pet Cemetery, Christine. Um, and also, you know, there's some of the things that are starting to get a bit more experimental and different, like uh, like Gerald's Game and Dolores Claiborne. But Gerald's Game and Dolores Claiborne were both quite short books, whereas this is a lot longer. So this is over 500 pages. So it's a bit more padded out like his, you know, some of his longer stuff. But it's also um, like some of his more classic stuff, shall we say. But it's also a bit more thoughtful, um, like Dolores Claiborne and, um, and Gerald's Game were. And I think for me, that's why I tripped over it first time around. It's It's got quite a slow, gentle pace at first, and it didn't didn't you know first time around clearly it didn't grab me this time around um it took me a while to kind of settle into it as a book so i think that's why i didn't manage to finish it first time around i think it i think it marks the, the start of a kind of slight change of pace for king and a slight different style to his writing and i think that that is you know kind of as he matured as a writer and as some of his you know the themes and things like that that he wanted to cover changed and there is a you know significant theme in this book about being a middle-aged guy so about um and in, in particular with the with the main character of this book and his his um interactions with a young woman about him wondering uh, and worrying about how you know society the other people in the town perceive that um so there's definitely something about the kind of existence of middle age that king was was moving into at this point um or was was well into at this point actually um that is you know becomes a theme in this book um and funnily enough i am i think i'm exactly the same age that king was when he wrote this so i could certainly relate to some of those themes of, of male middle age that, that he talks about so anyway let me tell you what the book is about as with many stephen king's uh, stephen king books it's about two different things so one of the plots is about uh, an author, um, so a fairly successful kind of suspense author. Um, so not a, not a horror author, not exactly the same as Stephen King, but, you know, very similar to Stephen King in many ways. Not quite as successful as King was, but or King is. Um, so it's about an author whose wife dies suddenly um, and about him, you know, trying to come to terms with that and, and suffering from writer's block as a result of her death. Um, so uh, there's a lot in here about the mechanics of being a writer. So about like, his relationship with his agent, about you know how how he writes books, and and the fact that he's got um, a load of books kind of queued up that he's written that he's never submitted to his agent and publisher. Um, so he publishes one book a year, but he writes two books a year, and that extra book kind of goes in the attic, and he's got it you know for for a rainy day, which is which is what happens in this book. So part of the book is about that and particularly about him going to this place they've got in the country um, and, you know, kind of staying there and coming to, to feel that the place is, is haunted. Um, so there's some really good kind of spooky supernatural scenes um, as, as a result of that. The second storyline in the book is about the same writer befriending this young woman 
um, who um, is going through like a terrible time for various reasons, and uh, and it's about a custody battle um, involving her child. So that's really what what the the second plot line is about. And King, as he as he often does, manages to mash those two storylines together really well and make a, a really interesting and engaging book. Um, and in particular, I have to say, I preferred the storyline about the custody battle. The the kind of people on the other side of that custody battle are some of the most horrible <laughs> villains that King's ever written. In fact, in some ways, they remind me a little bit of the villains in Holly, um, his newest book, which I've which I've reviewed recently on the channel. So yeah, really horrible characters. Uh, and there's some really gripping, tense scenes um, as that storyline kind of plays itself out. Um, but the supernatural kind of storyline is really interesting as well, as you come to understand what has you know what is the root of that supernatural activity if you like um so yeah two storylines both of which are well handled one more of a kind of thriller suspense storyline one more of a horror supernatural storyline but they mesh together well in this book and I, I really did have a good time with it um as i've said you get that theme of uh, you know, kind of middle-aged maleness, which is handled well and is quite interesting. There's also a strong theme in this book about um, about racism. So particularly about um, the treatment of black people in this this small town um, that he uh, that the the main character, the author, has this kind of holiday home in. And there's also a theme of that kind of town versus country thing. Um, so the people in the people in this small town being slightly, super, you know, slightly suspicious of um, the author as like a bit of an outsider. But it's this this theme of racism which is really central to the book, and and I thought quite well handled. Um, but it, it it kind of tackles that that question of racism racism in America in a slightly roundabout way, in, in a similar way to. To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, and in fact, To Kill a Mockingbird is referenced in this book. So, To Kill a Mockingbird, if you think about it, you know, very much talks about racism through the eyes of of white characters, uh, and through the actions of of white characters. So, you know, it's it's a, the, the the white hero, you know, fighting for for justice for for the black characters rather than the black characters having their own kind of agency, and that is is true in this book as well, which you know. Fiction and, you know, books and things like that have, have moved on since then, haven't they? And, you know, we have far more authors writing in their own voices about the experience of, of racism in the States, which is which is fantastic. But I thought, you know, for its time, this is a, a, a pretty well handled book about American racism. So that was interesting. The other thing you get in this book, which I, I love in Stephen King books. So people criticise Stephen King for writing too much about writing. And it, it's definitely something he comes back to time and time again. And as I've said, he does it a lot in this book. One of the things he does in this book, though, which I thought was fantastic, is he talks a lot about other writers. Um, other writers that the author admires, other writers that the author is kind of competing against in the bestseller charts and things like that. Um, and, you know, the author reads quite a lot of books in this book and King tells you what those books are. One of them is a book I've read, actually, The Charm School by Nelson DeMille, which I read probably around the same time this came out, actually, and, and remember enjoying. Um, so, yeah, I've always found Stephen King to be a great source of recommendations for, like, good, entertaining, solid, popular authors. And there's a few authors he mentions in here. Uh, Richard North Patterson was one of them, who I've never read, who I may well uh, pick up books by as a result of reading this. So, yes, overall, a very solid entry, I think, in the King canon. I understand, as I say, why it probably didn't appeal to me when it first came out, when I first tried to read it, when I was... 25 um, but as someone who is now 50 it you know it definitely appealed more and I really really enjoyed it so I hope you found it interesting let me know in the comments if you read Bag of Bones and what you thought of it um, and as always thank you very much for watching I hope you're safe and well out there I hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon cheerio